Hi there, David Benyashek here, your Building Capacity Coach, and congratulations on coming to this page to swipe your free download of the Employee uh, Development Template. I, I think it's a cool tool, and I'm happy to share it with you. Uh, two purposes, to build purpose and engagement. Uh, when you look at building engagement for leaders and managers and their employees, uh, it can be really complex. You can take a 1,000 workshops by a 1,000 books on the subjects, but I like to break down things to be simple. Uh, if you want employee engagement to increase, then engage your employees. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I know it sounds really easy to say and it's harder to do. Why? My experience in 20 years in industry and coaching leaders across North America for the past 15 years is that they get caught up in the how and the what and the where. They, they don't see the clear vehicle uh, to doing that. It's not been a simple path that's been created for them. And so when they look at a mountain of work and they don't know where to start, it often gets pushed off and delayed and not done uh, to the detriment of their employees' motivation, satisfaction, engagement, and ultimately that contributes to the detriment of leaving results on the table and not getting the most you can out of your team and not being the best that you can possibly be. So here's my uh, thing with this particular template. This video is uh, simply an introduction video to it to walk you through, give you some tips and tricks for each individual page uh, and you know help you get the most out of uh, this particular download. Uh, it, the, the, the process should answer the question, what's in it for me? WIFM, it's the first thing that anyone asks when they are requested to do something for someone else. And of course, that's the essence of what an employee is. You're asking them to do work to help your company be successful. And you know what? It's important for them to know that your company has an ROI goal of 15%. And that's kind of cool for people to know. And most employees um, appreciate that. And they want to help companies uh, be successful and achieve those goals because they know if their company is successful, their job is sustainable. The two are interlinked. But most leaders, and here's what I think the bar is low for you, and this is where this time excited about what this template can do for to help make you shine in your organization and make your team shine. Most leaders don't take the step of helping employees understand how in helping the company achieve their ROI, they get stuff that is beneficial to them. A matter of fact, I think most leaders, especially in North America today, actually just judge people on their ability to self-motivate and become a motivated employee. And they forget about the potential of an environment to help employees be that. And the moral of the story is sometimes we throw the diamond out with the water. And I don't want you to do that. This template has four basic sections. The first section is where do I want to go? Without a destination, how can you plan to go anywhere? Uh, the second section is where am I? I love my iPhone. And when I say Siri, root me too. Her ability to do that successfully is dependent on her knowing where I am. And she uses GPS to figure that out. Section number three is what is the gap? When you've identified, this is a really starts to get cool. When you've identified where you want to go, and you identify where you're starting from, you can start to plan the stops along the way and the route that you're going to take to get from A to B. And the last one is what do I commit to? Because while it's great to talk about possibilities and it's great to talk about, you know, the future and a vision for it, uh, it's even sweeter to realize it. It's even sweeter to see results and see action and see movement and create momentum. And that's what this simple template can do. Uh, for you. So let's walk through it. Step number one is goal creation. A very simple question. Where do you see yourself two or three years down the road in your career and personally? I will say this, the personal side, they don't have to answer it. You can be clear. You can divulge as much or as little as you want in that particular section, but stress the importance of them actually doing this for themselves, even if they don't share it with you. And most employees will share it with you. But uh, but but here's the, the scoop. If you don't have a destination, that's why people don't find life as fulfilling as they can be because they'd never set a goal in the future and some place to kind of uh, uh, target their actions and, and funnel their actions towards a goal. Uh, when you ask that question, I need to be prepared. My experience tells me that many times uh, that you're going to get an answer like, good question, boss. I don't know. They've never really thought about it. They've gotten stuck in a rut. Uh, they're, they're there to pay the rent and pay the bills and get to Friday and maybe buy a case of beer. And hopefully, you know, Susan will go on a date with them. Uh, and that's the extent of their planning. You shouldn't 
you shouldn't get shot down at that particular point. Actually, you should be encouraged at that particular point uh, because that's your chance to be a hero and start to get them thinking about putting goals and vision in their life because you can't be engaged in something unless it's meaningful to you. Uh, and so here's my tip, and it comes from my book, An Authenticity, A Pathway to Purpose, uh, is that when people aren't certain of where they should go, I know that there are a lot of clues in the data of the past. And so in the book, I tell people to create a journal. And the journal is entries are triggered by your emotions. And it means that when you go through a period where you're feeling great, and there are very few difficult people in your life because you're feeling great, uh, and uh, you don't have to hit the snooze button, and you love what you do, what are you doing in that time? Okay, it's good to capture that I felt great from August 1st to August 30th of 2019, but what was I doing? during that time. And conversely, if you go through a period of a day, a month, a year, a decade, where you're having to hit the snooze button, and you know, you 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 continue to be in this funk and you're you're not up to it, you don't feel like it. What are you doing? After a while, when you look at that journal, uh, it's gonna send some huge messages to you. And the message is gonna come and when you look for confirmations. You know, what are, you know, I, I see, a, a, you know, a hundred entries. What are they, what in general are they telling me? Maybe it's telling me that when I'm being creative, I'm happiest. Maybe it's telling me when I get to organize, I love life. Maybe it's telling me that when I collect money, <laughs> it's, it's my most joyful time. What is it telling you? Bring out some categories of things that give you joy and they tend to be correlated with things that you're good at and conversely uh, bring out categories of things that drain your energy and uh, and you may actually be good at some of them but the fact is you hate doing them and if you're in that environment your boss is not going to get the most out of you because motivation is want to plus have to and uh, if you don't want to that's a rough ride but you want that information. So here's the scoop with your employees. If they start with, I don't know, or I'm not sure. Most people cannot fill this out once you've given it to them in that session. Or if they did, it would be vastly incomplete and largely inaccurate. Can you challenge them to go and have some fun around two parts of this particular page? Because the second part is list the skills and experience and resources that are going to be required for it to become reality is to build a community and to go out to colleagues uh, in their workplace and in your company and to go out to their friends and family and to go out to other communities outside of work that they're involved in and go to people that they trust and respect and maybe ask the question, you know what, if you didn't know what I did, what would you see me doing? Uh, when did you see me happiest in life and what was I doing? You know, where do you think, you know, my my identity lies? Where, what, you know, ask those sorts of questions and get that particular data, not just from one or two people, but maybe challenge them to at least ask a dozen people. And then go, what do they have in common and what resonates with them? And use that as a starting point to say, you know what, it may not be my final destination, but let's start here two to three years down the road. I want to be more in a project management position because I love organizing stuff. Or it means that, you know what, I'm happiest when I'm in nature. And so I want to buy a cottage five years down the road. And so that's going to be my plan on my personal side. And for that second thing, that community is useful because when you talk about the skills and experiences and, and accreditations that might be resources that might be necessary to achieve it, um, it's good to go to the people that are already there and saying what's required. If you know they aspire to be a leader in your organization, what are the key skills that you think you know make you successful today? And they might be things like organization, they might be things like assertiveness, they might be things like communication and presentation. They, they could be a number of things, but start to write down what those things are. It establishes a goal and it tells you a little bit more about what's required to be happy and successful in that destination. And then you can move on and say, okay, what's your current assessment? Back to my phone in Surrey. It can't successfully get me to where I'm going unless it knows where I'm starting. Uh, and uh, again, I'm going to encourage you, this involves a community because self-perception can be warped. Most people that I know vastly underestimate and under-communicate their strengths. They're very humble. 
Uh, and there are a few people that are a legend in their own mind, and what they communicate as their strengths are far from it. There usually is a gap between self-perception and reality, and community is your key to filling that gap. Uh, and so, you know what? Start by taking stock of their strengths and weaknesses. And it might be even driven from some of the exercises they did in point number one, where when was I happiest? When was I not? As a supervisor, you can tell them, when do you, when were you most proud of them? When do you tend to kind of question? <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing in those times? Giving them that data is uh, is powerful and start to write those things down uh, towards saying, okay, you know, career and personal, here's where I'm at today. Here's, here's kind of a description of who I am, what I'm strong at, the skills that I have. Um, you don't need a community to tell you what your degrees and accreditations are, but write them down. Here's where I'm starting. You know, to the second point on this slide, the first step of any plan is painful when it's not based in reality. And too often that happens in organizations where they assume someone is at a starting place that they're not. And the plan was a good plan, uh, but the reason it failed was it didn't start in the right place. Take some time with these first two steps. Have some fun with them. Don't rush it. Uh, by taking an interest in your employee and helping them take an interest in yourself, you're taking a cool first step towards engaging them. And when you've done that, it leads you to, to uh, section number three, which is opportunity. And it says, identify the gap. And if you ever go to London, England, it's mind the gap on the C train, mind the gap. And that's what we're doing here. We're saying, okay, we know where you're at with skills and knowledge and experience and accreditations. We know where you want to go and what it's going to take, skills and experience and knowledge and accreditation. What's missing? So what are the items? What's the list? So you start to write them down, both from a career perspective and a personal perspective. If they want to buy a cottage, it might be missing $100,000 for the down payment. Uh, if they want to be a, a, a supervisor or a leader in your organization or a project manager, <laughs> there might be um, CAD training they require, or uh, it might be, um, better organizational skills than they currently have because it's going to really highlight that weakness if they don't take steps to improve it once they get into that new role because of what that role demands. Uh, start to identify the gap and then also start to list what's going on in the business because usually what's going on in your business requires certain skills and, and it offers opportunities for certain skills to be developed. So you want to capture those two things with um, the, the eye on the last page, which is the plan. It's cool to talk about stuff. It's better to do it. And priority management principles say it's good to take a large goal and break it down into smaller steps. I recommend for leaders uh, breaking it down into quarters. What are three things you can do? Even if they're small things, what are three steps that you can take this quarter to help you start narrow the gap from where you are to where you want to go? Uh, and that'll be determined by what are the greatest priorities and what is the greatest, you know, availability of things based on what's going on in the business to help them achieve their goals. When you do this, even though it may only be 25% of their day or 10% of the day, it may not be 100% of their day, you start to instill purpose into their work. And that word sounds so elusive, but it's a few choices away from being a reality Purpose means they see in how what they're doing for you, it benefits themselves. And that common sense needs to be communicated. And you've downloaded the template, which is a solid vehicle to help you have those discussions and create that communication so it becomes a reality. I like the bottom section. It just was where you sign off. And, and it's a commitment to the plan. It says, you know, as an employee, I commit to 100% effort in cleaning the tasks above, and I commit to seeking help where I may struggle. And not assuming that if I can't do it, I wasn't meant to do it. We all need help along the way. Establish that expectations. I commit to my personal growth and helping my company grow. And they sign it and they date it. And then the manager, your job is can. So, you know, they cannot do well in their job unless you set them up with clear expectations of what this all means and the tools to do the job. And so as you sign, you should talk about, you know, what's missing. You know, are there any gaps that as a leader you need to fill in terms of a little bit of training here, um, a little bit of, of, of introduction to certain people in the organization to build relationships there, to make that journey possible? That is your role. You have a commitment that you need to sign off as well. 
This starts to build a team. It's not boss and employee. It's two people teaming together for the, for the embetterment of everyone, for the empowerment of results for both the individual and the corporation. So I hope that you find this template useful. I hope that you use it. Uh, and then every quarter, you start to go back. How did we do? And it starts afresh. Do we still have the same goals? Uh, and where are we at? And what's been checked off the list? And what's remaining? And what's now going on in the business? And how can we intentionally create purpose out of things that need to be done anyways for the embetterment of their engagement uh, with the particular company? I like taking what seems emotionally complex, leading people and making it simple. Um, and my truth is, is that for your employees, their mantle, the sort of that foundation, the altar of what they're going to build their potential on is based on consistency. And if you just dare use this simple template on a consistent basis, quarterly, 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 this does not have to be a full day discussion. It can be, once it gets going, can be something that's done in an hour. You're going to create an environment where all of a sudden, two years later, they're going to look back and go, whoa, I've come a long way. And you're going to look at them and go, whoa, they offer way more than I thought they did. Why? Because you've set up new expectations, you set them up for success, um, and you create an environment uh, that empowers people and empowers results. Uh, so have fun with it. If you want more from Building Capacity, uh, here's a couple things that are coming up. A virtual building capacity mentoring event, leadership mentoring, May 13th to 15th. Uh, it's going to be on the LiveStorm platform. It's a video uh, training, three days, four hours each day. Uh, building capacity is all about the power of an environment to help leaders influence people for results. If it's all up to you and your personal cred and your personality to motivate people to get things done, life as a leader can be a long road. It can be a heavy road. We are the product of our environment. And if you know that to be true, the environment you build today will influence the results of what you need tomorrow. And this workshop is going to give you the blueprint. Kind of like this template is going to give you a step-by-step way to build environments that will create teams that you're going to love being the leader of and you're going to be proud of being the leader of and that are going to take you and your career further than you could have ever gone if it was totally up to you. I've written two books. I mentioned Authenticity, A Pathway to Purpose. Uh, this is a book. It's a personal book. It's like, how do you figure out what you were supposed to do? It talks about that journal and offers a, a practical uh, sort of step-by-step -step process to help people say, okay, that sounds like an elusive question, a grandiose pie-in-the-sky question, but the answer to it's important both to myself and to my company, um, how practically do I get there? And so it's very personal, uh, but it gives a process that can help people. The second is five choices for building or for effective leadership. Uh, like this template, I like to take something that's complex and make it simple, step-by-step. -step. Five choices that leaders can focus on uh, to see results in their team, past all of the things that their mind is telling them they need to do. Focus on these five things that are important and results will start to produce themselves. A great foundational book for any new leader uh, and also a great book for any leader that might be currently struggling or knows that there's always a better way of doing things because it brings it down to the basics and allows you to assess kind of what you're doing around you know, what can be done and just allows you to tweak. Uh, and so uh, if that's something, the link is on the website, authenticity.com. You see it on the left-hand side. Uh, and then I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you're a leader and you have some specific goals, maybe, you know, you've, you're in this sort of development discussion with someone and you know you need to improve in a certain area, I would love to chat with you. We'll talk about where you want to go. We're going to talk about where you're at. We're going to use the, the format of this template uh, to lay out a pathway to empowering you to get to where you want to go. Uh, and so uh, enjoy the template. Uh, come back. You can sign up down below on this particular form for our newsletter, which will inform you of new products that are coming out and new templates that are, uh, are available for download, new trainings that are available. Uh, but here's to your success. Have yourself a great day.